Are you considering a low carb diet, maybe a keto diet? I have friends who will substitute lettuce for the buns on their cheeseburgers. Maybe you're like me and my family and want to improve your well being or eat healthier, lose weight, or prevent or reverse a chronic disease. You might think the only way to eat healthy is to stop eating all carbs. Carbs are bad, carbs make you fat. Eat a low carb diet to lose weight. Carbs are an incredibly effective fuel source, like a hydrogen fuel cell to power a car. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, but it gets a bad rap. It's not well understood, and most of the hydrogen fueling stations in the US are in California. Okay, that's where this analogy breaks down. Carbs are everywhere, and we can cook with carbs anywhere. In this video, let's sort through five fallacies about this fuel to figure out the best plan for your well being. Fallacy number one only bread, pasta, and potatoes are carbs. For the longest time, we have thought that gasoline was the only way to fuel our cars, but that's no longer the case, especially after seeing the devastation fossil fuels have on the planet. Likewise, many people have a very limited view of carbs. Turns out batteries and hydrogen can power cars, and most foods actually contain a combination of carbs, protein, and fat. These are the three macronutrients or macros. Macros maintain our body's structure and functioning, and we need them in large amounts to function optimally. That's why they're the macronutrients, not micronutrients, small amounts like vitamins and minerals. The primary role of carbohydrate is to provide energy to all cells in the body and dietary fiber. Take rolled or old fashioned oats. 100 grams of oats is almost 69 grams of carbohydrates and also 13 and a half grams of protein and almost six grams of fat. They also contain vitamins and minerals like phosphorus, copper, and iron. Did you realize that dairy milk contains carbs? So you can also find carbs in dairy products, fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, legumes, and beans, seeds, and of course, sugary foods and sweets. Bottom line, most foods except for meat and seafood contain a combination of carbs, protein, and fat. What happens to those carbs? Fallacy number two, carbs turn into sugar. The word hydrogen might conjure up images of the hydrogen bomb instead of clean energy. Maybe you're thinking the same about carbs, turning into sugar cube bombs, exploding your fat cells. Turns out carbs do turn into sugar, but not the kind of sugar you think. The fallacy here is in thinking that sugar is automatically bad for our bodies. When we eat a food containing carbs, the digestive system breaks down the digestible carbs into glucose or blood sugar. That's not the kind of sugar you might find in candy or drink in a soda. Next, the blood sugar glucose enters the blood. Blood sugar levels rise. The pancreas produces insulin. Insulin is a hormone that prompts cells to absorb blood sugar Sugar for energy or storage. Cells start absorbing blood sugar so levels in the bloodstream fall. When blood sugar levels drop too far, the pancreas makes glucagon. That's a hormone that tells the liver to release some stored sugar. Together, insulin and glucagon make sure that all cells throughout the body and brain have a steady supply of blood sugar for energy. The brain, by the way, uses half of all the sugar energy in the body. In fact, your brain's constant requirement for glucose is the primary reason why the current recommended dietary allowance, RDA, for carbohydrates for all adults is at least 130 grams per day. The problem is when we eat too much dietary sugar or carbs and keep glucose levels higher than what we need. All this energy has to go somewhere. I didn't realize that a limited amount of sugar in the form of glycogen is stored in our muscles. The greater the exercise intensity, the greater the rate at which muscle glycogen runs out. Take a high intensity activity like repeated sprints. It can quickly lower glycogen stores in active muscle cells, even though the total time was relatively short. Most of the energy though is turned into triglycerides, which are fat molecules or fat cells or fat droplets and stored in fat tissue, the liver or muscles. Over time, the danger is insulin resistance when the cells in your muscles, fat and liver no longer respond to insulin like it should. Bottom line, our bodies break down carbs into sugar for a good reason, to give us energy for our brain and body to function, like for physical activity or to escape from danger. It's easy to think then that all carbs are the same. Fallacy number three, all carbs are the same. 
We tend to think that all fuels are the same, whether it's gasoline, EV, hydrogen, fuel up your car and go. Fuel up your body with some calories and go. If you need energy, eat a candy bar. A carb is a carb, right? We already know that fossil fuels have a different environmental impact than something like hydrogen. Hydrogen cars produce water vapor, no carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases. Carbs are no less complex. The nutritional quality of different carbs is quite different. Let's compare complex and simple carbs. Simple carbs are also known as simple sugars. Milk, fruits, and vegetables contain natural simple sugars. These natural sugars come with fat, protein, and fiber, if it's a fruit or vegetable. That slows down how quickly the sugar is digested. Fruits and vegetables have the added benefit of organic acids, minerals, and antioxidants, vitamins, and polyphenols. When sugar is added to processed food, a rapid blood sugar spike and drop is usually what you get because sugars are digested so quickly. Frequent rapid blood sugar spikes and drops can lead to overeating and weight gain. Where are the most simple sugars in the American diet? Sugar added to foods. Think of large amounts of sugar added to flavored yogurt, soda, baked treats, packaged cookies, fruit juice concentrate, and sugary breakfast cereals. Complex carbs, on the other hand, also contain natural simple sugar, but it comes with other types of carbs, fiber and starch, along with vitamins, minerals, and lots of phytonutrients. The starch component gives us energy when our bodies metabolize it into glucose. The fiber component means complex carbs are digested more slowly and release glucose into the bloodstream more gradually. It also makes them more filling, helpful for weight control. Some foods are considered higher in dietary fiber like fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and whole grains. Other foods are higher in starch like potatoes, whole wheat bread, corn, oats, peas, and rice. But hold on, the grain group can be broken down into whole grains and refined grains. The whole grain has the bran, the outer hard shell of the grain, packed with fiber, B vitamins and minerals. The germ is the next layer with the essential fatty acids and vitamin E. Then the soft center is the endosperm, which contains the starch. A refined grain like white flour and pasta, white bread, pastries, and pizza crust only contains the endosperm, just the starch. The fiber and micronutrients have been stripped away. You've got it now. Refined grains can cause bigger spikes and drops in blood sugar levels. Once you get the short burst of energy, you may need to eat more food, maybe even a high number of calories, which can lead to weight gain. They don't have much nutritional value or fiber, unlike unrefined carbs, which can provide nutrition, improve digestive health, and keep your blood sugar stable. Eating refined or simple carbs is linked to drastically increasing the risk of many diseases, including obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Bottom line. All carbs are not the same. They can have different components, sugar, starch, and fiber, and different levels of processing from none or minimal, the whole grains, to highly processed, the refined grains. All of these factors have different impacts on our health. Let's look at weight gain first. Fallacy number four. Carbs are fattening or follow a low carb diet to lose weight. Have you ever accidentally overfilled your car's gas tank? It spills out. With our bodies, when we eat too much, our body does its best to store the fuel. So anything can be fattening if you eat too much of it. Eat more calories than you burn and you're going to gain weight. The bathroom scale is our witness. The problem carbs are not so much in whole grains, beans, fruits, and vegetables, unless you're overeating a lot. But in ultra-processed foods with refined grains and loads of added sugar, these foods do not fill you up unless you do eat a ton of it. And they are so tasty and rewarding to our brain that it's too easy to overeat. Candy and chips, pastries and cakes, fast foods. A fast food meal alone packs about twice the calories of a normal healthy meal. The key to carbs is severely limiting added sugars, choosing whole foods like fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains, and watching your portion size. Don't think you need to eat a lot more calories because you're eating whole foods. Keep portion sizes reasonable, consider the serving size, and stop eating when you're full, not stuffed. We covered added sugars, whole foods, and portion size. Let's switch to a popular diet called a ketogenic or keto diet. It's very low in carbs, moderate in protein, and high in fat. People often pick this diet to lose weight. 
The goal is to induce ketosis so that your body breaks down fats or energy, releasing ketones. Instead of glucose, ketones give energy to cells and tissue. It's a normal process your body uses when you're sleeping, fasting, sometimes during physical activity. Think of ketones as the backup fuel to glucose, the same way EV is the backup energy system in the new Honda hydrogen-powered Honda CRV e FCEV. You can't always find a hydrogen refueling station, especially outside of China, Japan, South Korea, Germany, and California, so you can plug in and charge the EV battery. In the same way, your body doesn't always have glucose available. Now, a standard keto diet is 70% fat, 20% protein, and 10% carbs. For someone eating 2,000 calories a day, that's 50 grams of carbs, much less than the 130 recommended. It does work though, people lose weight rapidly, especially in the beginning. Interesting enough, research results show that the initial weight loss on a keto diet is due to loss of body water, glycogen, protein, and contents in the digestive tract. Weight loss on a low-fat, plant-based diet is from losing actual fat. This study summed it up. In controlled trials, low-carbohydrate diets appear no more effective than other diets that similarly restrict calories, nor are they more effective than other dietary interventions, such as low-fat vegetarian diets at inducing weight loss. In essence, don't think that keto diets are your only option. It's possible to follow a vegan keto diet, and even if you're eating a mostly fresh meat and fish, eggs, and cheese keto diet, you can add in tofu, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Dark green vegetables like broccoli, kale, and zucchini are low in carbs, while fruits like avocado, tomatoes, and berries are also low in carbs. Nuts and seeds like Brazil nuts, walnuts, and flax seeds are also low in carbs. Bottom line, carbs can be fattening if you consume way too much of them and if they are in the form of refined grains and added sugars. Also, low-carb diets are no better than low-fat plant-based diets for weight loss. Let's look at chronic diseases next. Fallacy number five, carbs increase your risk for chronic diseases. One of the really interesting components of carbs is fiber. Fiber can't be digested. It doesn't break down into glucose. One form of fiber, soluble fiber, dissolves in water and forms a gel-like substance in your digestive tract. Another form, insoluble fiber, doesn't dissolve in water but adds bulk to stool. By eating fruits, vegetables, legumes, grains, nuts, and seeds, you can get both forms and vitamins, minerals, and up to 10,000 well, 10,000 identified so far, phytonutrients. Soluble fibers lower blood cholesterol levels and help regulate blood sugar by slowing down glucose absorption. Insoluble fiber promotes regular bowel movements by preventing constipation and supports healthy digestion. Altogether, a fiber-rich diet can protect against inflammation and help you feel full for a longer time to prevent overeating. Desirable, healthy results, much in the same way that hydrogen cars produce water vapor, not carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases. And what about a low-carb diet like keto? It's just as important to eat fiber-rich foods. There are risks for anyone not eating enough fiber. Constipation and changes in gut bacteria are one possibility. A low-carb diet eliminates high-carb fruits, whole grains, starchy vegetables, and beans. They are rich sources of fiber that can feed the beneficial bacteria in our gut. Having a healthy gut may help boost immunity, improve mental health, and decrease inflammation. Bone health is another risk as a low carb diet could reduce bone mineral density and trigger bone breakdown over time. More studies are needed to fully understand the impact on bone health. How about chronic disease? A 2016 study found that people on low-carb diets have higher levels of LDL, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, a risk factor for heart disease. You tend to eat more red meat, processed meat, animal fat, and saturated fat on a keto diet. These are linked to an increased risk of chronic kidney disease, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. At the same time, you tend to eat a lot less protective foods like vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains on a keto diet. You may be thinking, but haven't humans eaten meat for millions of years? Probably, but definitely not at the same quantity and frequency that humans eat meat today. Too many studies have shown that heavy consumption increases 
atherosclerosis and cancer in most populations. And it's not just saturated fat or cholesterol. Our gut bacteria digest a nutrient in meat called L-carnitine. Digestion of L-carnitine has been shown to boost artery clogging plaque. Research has also shown that new GCS sugar molecule in red meats can cause inflammation that's low level in the young, but that eventually could cause cancer. As Ajit Varki, principal investigator at UC San Diego said, red meat is great if you want to live to 45. If you're on an animal-based keto diet, consider all the potential risks. Articles like this one weigh the short-term benefits and long-term risks of a keto diet, especially links to chronic diseases. A long-term observational study of over 100 30,000 adults linked animal-based low-carb diets to higher rates of death, including from heart disease and cancer, while vegetable-based low-carb diets were associated with a lower rate of death, including from heart disease. The authors of this investigation of over 82,000 nurses concluded that a low-carb diet emphasizing animal sources of fat and protein increased the risk of type 2 diabetes and death. Bottom line, animal-based keto diets are strongly linked to chronic diseases, so be sure to do your homework before starting or continuing any diet. And get this week's free 7410 Expanded Newsletter with a recipe and an update on where my family and I are with maintaining 7410 style for over two years. Link is in the description. Why do we do 7410 style? Our why is our well-being, the well-being of all living beings on this planet and the well-being of this planet. Those reasons are motivation to stick with a plant-based lifestyle, control portion sizes, and maintain a healthy weight. Hey, we really do appreciate your support. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you have a better understanding of our amazing fuel carbs and will eat more dietary fiber, no matter what you eat. And remember to take it one day at a time until it's seven days a week, forever 10.